Welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about how to take the derivative of exponential functions and logarithmic functions that have bases other than e. And so, so far we know how to take the derivative of exponential functions where the base is e, as well as logarithmic functions where the base is e, right? That is the natural log function. And we know that the derivative of e to the power of x is e to the power of x, and we know that the derivative of the natural log function is one divided by x. But what if we had an exponential function or a logarithmic function where the base wasn't e, right? What if we had some exponential function of a to the power of x where a represents some positive real number, right? It could be two, it could be three, right? Any positive real number. Or what if we had a log function with a base of a? How would we take the derivative of these functions? Well, in order to find the derivative of these functions, let's first define what they would be equal to. This exponential function where a is a positive real number to the power of x could also be written as e to the power of x times the natural log of a. And this is true because if we use that logarithmic property that the natural log of some value b to the power of n is equal to n times the natural log of b, we can move this x to be the power of a, right? We can take what's multiplied by the natural log function and make it the power of b of what is inside that natural log function. And so this would be equal to e to the power of the natural log of a to the power of x. And we know that e and the natural log function are inverse functions, and so they cancel each other out. And so we're just gonna be left with what is inside the natural log function. And so this is equal to a to the power of x, which is what we started with over here, right? And so we can rewrite a to the power of x as e to the power of x times the natural log of a, all right? So we know that that is true, but then what about log base a of x? This one might not be as obvious, but this is equal to one divided by the natural log of a times the natural log of x. And so just to show you that this is true, when we have log base e of x, right, this is the natural log function, log base e of x. If we use this definition of this log function where a is equal to e, we will have that this is equal to one divided by the natural log of e times the natural log of x. And note that the natural log of e is just equal to one. And so this just becomes one, which means we're multiplying one by the natural log function. And so this is just equal to the natural log function. And so as you can see, this is the definition of a log function with a base of a. And so the reason I bring up these formulas or these two definitions for these functions is that we are going to be able to use these definitions to find the derivative rules for exponential and logarithmic functions that have a base other than e. And so let's look at finding those derivative rules next. Okay, so here's our definitions. And so what we wanna to do to find the derivative of a to the power of x or the log base a of x we want to take the derivative of both sides of these equations. And so if we do that, we can figure out what the derivative rule for a to the power of x is and the derivative rule for log base a of x. And so let's start with the derivative of a to the power of x. Let's take the derivative of this function here. And so remember, when you take the derivative d dx of e to the power of some function u, that is equal to e to the power of u times the derivative of u right? And so if we use that in this scenario right here, where u is equal to x times the natural log of a, we will first rewrite that function. So this will be equal to e to the power of x times the natural log of a, and then multiply it by the derivative of that exponent. And so now this is just x times a constant multiple, right? The natural log of a is just going to be some value, whatever a is, it could be three, it could be four, right? It could be any positive real number. The natural log of that value is still just a constant multiple for x. And so when you take the derivative of x to the first power, it's just equal to that constant multiple being multiplied by it. And so we're just gonna be multiplying by the natural log of a. All right, and so then if we simplify this by using that log rule again, that we can take this value on the outside of the natural log function and make it the power of what is inside the log function, this will be equal to e to the power of the natural log of a to the power of x times the natural log of a. And so then notice that once again, this e and this natural log function are inverse functions, and so they will cancel out and so what we're left with is just this a to the power of x 
times the natural log of a. And so this is equal to a to the power of x times the natural log of a. And this right here is the derivative rule for the derivative of a to the power of x, right? So the derivative d dx of a to the power of x is equal to a to the power of x times the natural log of a. This is our first derivative rule for bases other than e. And so then let's look at the derivative of log base a of x. We're going to be taking the derivative of one divided by the natural log of a times the natural log of x. And notice that in this scenario, we're taking a derivative with respect to x. And so one divided by the natural log of a is just a constant, right? This is not going to be affected at all by the derivative with respect to x because there's no x in this value. And so we can pull that out and this will be equal to one divided by the natural log of a times the derivative d dx of the natural log of x. And we know that the derivative of the natural log of x is just equal to one divided by x. And so this is equal to one divided by the natural log of a times one divided by x, which will be equal to one divided by the natural log of a times x. And so this is a derivative rule for the derivative of log base a of x, right? The derivative d dx of log base a of x is equal to one divided by the natural log of a times x. And so this is our second derivative rule for bases other than e. We have one for exponential functions and we have one for logarithmic functions. Okay, and so now that we know these derivative rules and we found where they come from, let's look at some examples of using these derivative rules. All right, so here's our first example. We have the derivative of three to the power of x. And so remember the derivative of an exponential function that has a base of a where a is some positive real number that is equal to whatever a is to the power of x times the natural log of a. And so for this function, a is equal to three. And so the derivative will be equal to three to the power of x times the natural log of three right? That is the derivative of this function. Since three is a, we started by rewriting that function of three to the power of x right here. And then we multiplied by the natural log of a or the natural log of three, which is what we have right here. All right. So now let's look at our second example here. We have the derivative of log base three of x. And remember that the derivative of log base a of x is equal to one divided by the natural log of a times x. And so in this case, a is equal to three, right? We have log base three. And so this will be equal to one divided by the natural log of three times x. And that's it. That is the derivative of this logarithmic function with a base of three. Okay, so for our next example, we have the derivative of five to the power of x squared. And so now just like with our previous derivative rules, we also have a version of this rule that can be applied in scenarios where a is taken to the power of some function u that is not just x, right? So if we have a to the power of u where u is a function of x, that is equal to a to the power of u times the natural log of a times the derivative of u, right? This is just a chain rule in action for when you have another function in the power of a that is not just x. And so in this case, we have five to the power of x squared, which is not just x. And so we're going to need to use the chain rule. And so in this case, this will be equal to just rewriting our function here. So we will have five to the power of x squared times the natural log of a, which in this case is five. And so we'll have the natural log of five. And then we wanna multiply by the derivative of u, which in this case is x squared. So we wanna take the derivative of x squared, which we know is two x, because if we use the power rule for derivatives, we multiply the exponent down to have two times x, and then we subtract one from the exponent, and so two minus one is one, and so we have two times x to the first power. Okay, and so this is the derivative of this function, but if you wanted to, you could reorder it a little bit to have all your constant multiples out in the front, and so you could rewrite it to look like this. We could have two times the natural log of five times x times five to the power of x squared. All right, and that will be the derivative of this function. For our next example, we have the derivative of log base five of x squared. And so just like in our previous example, we also have a chain rule version of the derivative rule for the log base a function, right? So if we have log base a of some function u, where u is defined with x, that is equal to one divided by the natural log of a times u, 
times the derivative of u with respect to x. And so whenever you have a function of u that is not just x within your log function, you're going to need to use this derivative rule, or more generally, you just have to use the chain rule. And so in this case, we have x squared inside our log function, and so we are going to need to use this rule in order to take the derivative. And so we'll start with the first part of our derivative. We will have that this is equal to one divided by the natural log of a, which in this case is five, and then we're gonna multiply that in the denominator by whatever is inside our log function. And so that will be x squared. And then we will multiply that by the derivative of x squared, which just like in our previous example, is equal to two x by using the power rule. We multiply two down and subtract one from the exponent, so we have two x. Okay, and so then if we were to simplify this, notice that this x and one of these x's would cancel out, right? So this x will be gone and this will become x to the first power. And so our final answer will be that this is equal to two divided by the natural log of five times x. And that will be the derivative of this function. Now, there's actually another way that we could get this answer that might save you a little bit of time. And so in order to do that, we need to remember the properties of logarithmic functions. Now, if you've been watching our other lessons, you are familiar with these properties for the natural log, but I just wanted to review them again for all log functions, just so you remember that you can use these properties as you take the derivative of logarithmic functions. And so here are the properties of logarithmic functions. The first one is that log base a of a is equal to one, right? That's why log base e of e is equal to one, or the natural log of e is equal to one. If you have a log of a certain base and you plug that same value into that log function, it's equal to one. Our second property is that log base a of some value b to the power of n is equal to n times that log of base a of b. Right, so we just move that power of that value inside the log function to the outside, right? This n moved out to the front, and so that is our second property of logs. The third property is if you have log base a of some value b times another value c, that is equal to log base a of b plus log base a of c, right? So if you have two values being multiplied together within the log function, you can split that up into two log functions where you have the log of that first value plus the log of that second value. And then our fourth property is that if you have log base A of some value B divided by some value C, that is equal to log base A of B minus log base A of C, right? So if you have a quotient of two values within your log function, you can split that up and set it equal to the log of the numerator, B, minus the log of the denominator, C. All right, and so now that we have reviewed these important properties of logarithms, let's go back to our example here, and we can solve this derivative another way by rewriting this function by using that property that we can move this exponent inside the log function to the outside of the function. And so what we could also have is that this is equal to the derivative of two times log base five of x. And so this would just be equal to two times the derivative of log base five of x, which if we use that rule, is just one divided by the natural log of five times x. No chain rule required because we just have log base five of x. And so this would be equal to two divided by log base five times x, and that is also the derivative of this function. All right, and so no matter which way you do it, you will get the same answer as you see, these are exactly the same, but this method might be a little bit quicker and a little bit easier if you can remember those properties of logarithms. Okay, so for this example, we sort of have both of the functions that we are focusing on in this video combined into one function, right? We have log of some base other than e, and we have an exponential function of some base other than e inside that log function. And so how are we going to find the derivative of this function? Well, there's actually two different ways that we could do this. The first way would involve using one of the logarithmic properties from earlier, that if you have the log of some value with a power, you can take that power out to the outside of that log function. And so we can rewrite this to have y is equal to x times log base seven of nine, right? We took that exponent of x and moved it out to the outside of the function. All right, and so then if we wanna find the derivative dy dx, notice that all we have to take the derivative of here is x to the first power 
times some constant multiple, right? This doesn't have any variables in it. It's just log base seven of nine, which if you plug into your calculator, it would give you a real number. And so since we're just taking the derivative of x to the first power, we know that the derivative of x to the first power is just equal to its coefficient or its constant multiple in this case. And so the derivative is just equal to log base seven of nine. And so if you plug that into your calculator, that is approximately equal to 1.12915 and some more decimals. But either way, this would be the derivative of this function. And so that's the easiest way to find this derivative by just remembering that property of logarithms. But let's say you didn't remember that. How would you find this derivative? Well, if we use that chain rule for a log function with a base of a, or in this case seven, we will have that dy dx is equal to one divided by the natural log of the base, seven times the function inside your log function, so nine to the power of x, and then we're going to multiply by the derivative of that inside function, nine to the power of x. And the derivative of nine to the power of x is nine to the power of x times the natural log of nine. And so this would be equal to nine to the power of x times the natural log of nine divided by the natural log of seven times nine to the power of x. And so notice that this nine to the power of x and this nine to the power of x would cancel out because one is in the numerator and the other is in the denominator. And so this would just be equal to the natural log of nine divided by the natural log of seven. And so then this is the derivative of this function, which looks different than that answer we found before. But if you plug the natural log of nine divided by the natural log of seven into your calculator, you would get that same approximate value of 1.12915 and some more decimals. And so why is that the case? Well, if you remember back to the very beginning of this lesson, we said that log base a of x is equal to one divided by the natural log of a times the natural log of x. And that could be simplified to be the natural log of x divided by the natural log of a, right? And so compare this to what we have right here. The natural log of nine would match up with the natural log of x, and the natural log of seven would match up with the natural log of a, and so that would make a seven and x nine, and so we would have log base seven of nine. And that is the exact same answer that we found before from our first method that gave us this decimal value. And so that's why this is the exact same as log base seven of nine, which gives us that same answer of 1.12915. All right, so either way you get the same answer, but obviously remembering your properties of logarithms is going to save you some time, but you would still get the same answer regardless. All right, and so with that, that's all I had for this lesson. If you wanna see some more example problems, feel free to check out our examples video that I will have linked at the end of this video, as well as in the description below. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments, but if you don't have any questions, this is all I had for now, so I will see you next time.